All right, I got a brand new hour of stand-up material, and I'm coming to your city, babe. All you got to do is get those tickies at chrisdcomedy.com, August 17th to the 20th, Brea, California, Orange County, what up? Uh, September 8th to the 10th, San Francisco, California. September 18th, Tarrytown Music Hall. September 28th, Madison, Wisconsin, at the Barrymore Theater, a.k.a. the Drew Barrymore Theater. September 29th, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. September 30th, Chicago Theater, Chicago, Illinois. October 1st, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Then in late October, we got Baltimore. We got New Jersey. We got Philly. We got a bunch of shows all at chrisdcomedy.com. A lot of these tickets are very, very close to being sold out. So go get the tickets you want. Toronto in November, you got to get the tickets sooner. They're gone, baby. chrisdcomedy.com for Tiki Wikis. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos from Montreal in Quebec, <laughs> Canada. Um, we're in here. We're having a good time. We're at the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. Uh, and I wanted to do a podcast from bed. And I said my the guest that I want on my podcast will sleep over. And it's Matteo Lane. Hey, how are you? Buongiorno a tutti. Buongiorno a tutti. Buongiorno. Matteo Lane, no uh, relation to Nathan, no relation to Lois. I wish I was related to Nathan Lane. If you could be Lois Lane or Nathan Lane. Nathan who would, Lane. Okay. I hate Superman. You hate Superman. I can't think of anyone more boring than super i just have never been into the superman stories right and then they tried to do that like really super um that super serious superman a couple uh -huh. years ago and he just like murder he was just like destroying buildings and there was no reper like yeah yeah i feel like um you know i've never been um i was never into superheroes ever like ever? even when i was a kid my mother would just keep buying me superhero underwear and i was like stop trying to Make me like Gay. like superheroes, yeah, by putting fucking Spider Man on my <laughs> on my baby cock. I <laughs> used to oh look at, look at Superman. I, my my obsession was the X Men when I was a kid. Okay. It was, and it's also if you watch it, it's like super like very like gay themed. You know, yeah. it's like a mix of race and gay, like racism and homophobia. Right. And the homophobia in the sense of the like, uh, you know, like there's there's something that's inside of you that happens when you're 13, but no one can know. You have to keep it a secret. No yeah. one will accept you. And, yeah. Fuck, I loved it. And I loved Storm so much. I was yeah. upset. Like, she was so dramatic. They'd be like, Storm, can you open the window? And she'd be like, winds rise and sweep the thorns <laughs> from our path. And I just, I would put on a cape. With my co my cousin Brian's also gay. And he would play Jubilee. And he'd put yeah. on my mom's, my mom's yellow cleaning gloves yeah. and run around the house. And I had a cape. It was great. Well, uh, Pimp just pulled up. An article um, that says X Men as a queer metaphor, which should be uh, I, the homeless pimple get that tattooed on him at some point. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, they're saying that X Men is a queer metaphor, and it's been like that uh, from day one. Yeah. So I think that what's happening now is all these things that were, you know, when there would be rumors, I don't know if we were kids, I'm a little bit older than you, but they'd be like, oh, they wrote the Smurfs, the guys who created the Smurfs were on mushrooms. Or, and, and you would be like, no, that's not true. But now you're starting, as, as so we're Bruce getting Valance so progressive. just wrote the X-Men. <laughs> yeah, 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 I just wrote it. <laughs> so so I, I feel like all these things are probably true. And I know a lot of people are getting mad at the way you know, you hear a lot of people yelling about society. I kind of like where society is going. I kind of like, I actually think, you ready for this? <laughs> I actually think that where we're going, it looks like it's getting worse, but I actually think we're coming into the best time in humanity. And it's not because, oh, because anarchy and I'm an anarchist. I just think it's going to be fun. I actually think <laughs> the tensions, believe it or not, the tensions are slowing down. Now, listen, the tensions... The only real way to fully release them is, yes, unfortunately, Ukraine will have to get nuked, but that's just what it is. Oh it happened in Japan. It happened. And then, and then, but things get better. You know how great life was in the 50s and 60s. And it's, I mean, look at the 60s. I mean, for, for, it wasn't great for gays. Was it not? <laughs> was there a place? Let me ask you this. I actually yes. want to ask you this. Um, where was the first place in the world that gays were accepted? Where do you think? Day one, where was your ground zero? Um, the Garden of Eve. Gay zero. <laughs> where, what was the Adam and Eve garden? Oh, um, Eden. Eden. The Eden. Garden of Eden is, uh, yeah. So you think Adam from Adam and Eve was gay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. He was like, yeah, a woman. 
<laughs> and then that snake was like, kill her. You know, like they were, they were, they were like, you know, mean gays. Um, yeah, dude, I, it's so, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, first of all, I got to tell you this. I've, I was, Jasmine reminded me to tell you this. Cause I just, I don't know. I forgot. We were like laugh. We, so we're taking Delilah and Violet and, and baby Tristan to Disneyland okay. in two weeks because I'm doing the Brea Improv. Do you know I've never been to Disney World or Disneyland. What? I know. Well, my we that, didn't have money growing up, so like we never were able to go. So. That's like me never going to like a football game. Yeah, I've <laughs> also never been to a football game. Oh my god, dude! We, literally, I've been to White Sox games. Oh, that's okay. When I was baseball. A kid. Yeah, my uncle Mike would take us. Yeah. Should we think about it. We're good to go. All right, we're back. Although I posted this picture and lost about 3,000 followers. You lost 3,000 followers with this picture? <laughs> Why did he lose 3,000 followers with this picture? <laughs> yeah, my friend Why? Sean's birthday. It was a Pokemon theme party, but just so gay. Because I, I, I do more comedy now, you know what I'm saying? So it's like when I post like nudes and stuff, people are like, no, boo. Oh, I, God. We'll be, post nudes together. I want to post nudes. I'll, I'll be the new star. I brought a Speedo. I, brought my, I actually texted Andrew. I was like, are you coming? Because he had an orange Speedo. He's like, no, I'm not going to be there. And I was like, oh, okay. I brought a pink Speedo just in case. I So when you go to the beaches in Europe, yes. I know the guys wear Speedos and our women. Just naked. in Italy, really. Okay. That's like an Italian <clears throat> thing because I, I was in Spain and I, I was like, had my Speedo ready because I was so used to like Italy. Everyone wears Speedos and looks so gay. Right. And then, um, but they, they like kind of wear board shorts in Spain. I was like, oh, fuck. But Italians, it's like Italian men. And I remember this one guy when I was 15 in Sicily. He was like in his early hundreds, like pubes uh -huh. sticking out of the side of his Speedo. <laughs> and he just he had a, like a little net and he would just walk into the ocean. No mask, nothing. Just go in the ocean. And like five minutes later, would come back and have all these like sea urchins. Yeah. And he would chop them in half at the beach and suck out the orange juice. Oh my God! And then he, I see. I would think if you ate a live creature out of the ocean like that, you'd get sick immediately. But this guy just didn't. No, give Italians it. don't die. They just sort of live forever. They also used to, they were 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 my so in Messina, right in Sicily, they have these giant <clears throat> uh, swordfish. Which have you ever seen a swordfish before? No. They're the size of this room. They're huge. Real. Somebody just got killed by a swordfish. Well, they were asking for it, and <laughs> they got stabbed in the chest. And was it my, no? Steve Irwin was a was a stingray. Yeah, I, no, th this was like literally somebody on a boat. There was like a tourist thing and like I th or, or they got stabbed through the shoulder. Like, yeah, Google guy gets stabbed with stort Steve swordfish. Irwin Poor Steve Irwin. Oh, Steve Irwin. <laughs> oh and then Bindi Irwin. Like, oh, he he died and his daughter like a week later was like, that's right. I have my own TV show, Bindi's Adventures. I was like, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> and she was so like, like adult. She was like, she was like seven. She's like, I'll answer those questions like, uh, yes, you. And I was like, relax, Bindi. <laughs> Bindi. Your father just died. I know. Yeah. For, um, uh, Florida. Oh, it was a Florida man stabbed with swordfish in oh, a no, fight. Fi now that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. <laughs> that someone was like, I'm going to take this swordfish, cut off his sword and use it as real sword and take it to duels. <laughs> they were at a, a, a sizzler and oh. he was like, I ordered decaf on guard, you know, and just <laughs> went for it. Get hit with a swordfish. I just got back from Florida and Florida is like two different countries. There's Miami and then there's Florida. Florida. Now you were in Miami. Yes. Um. With you had a bunch of shows there, and you were keeping it safe because we're worried. We're a little worried about monkeypox. We're here. a little worried about okay. monkeypox. It's not just a, a gay disease, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, it is, we believe, spread through close contact and sex. And so I haven't got my vaccine. So I have been living like a Victorian woman the past three weeks. Oh, I love it. Just like my... Ver my I feel like you've been living like a Victorian woman for since I've known <laughs> you. Oh, no, Chris. I mean, the things get dirty. Um, but, oh. I mean, I, I literally will show, like, my ankle from across the room, like, on a fainting couch. Yeah. I'm like, hello. I'm Maggie Smith well, in Downton Abbey. Because I feel like, I feel like you are not, like, some, some you know, like, even, my, you know, my, my friends, you know, my, my heterosexual friends, my homosexual friends, my lesbian friends, my straight girlfriends, whatever. I feel like you are not. I can usually pick out who's provocative, who's a little slut, and I don't believe that you are. You don't. You would give that vibe off to me, like I was like, oh, if I was a gay man, I'd be like, I'm gonna have to work to fuck to bang this guy. Well, that's <laughs> nice of you to say. Yeah. And which which is would, that why we're in bed? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Um, I um I, I think, but you're saying that you're a little. You're not. You have a little bit more fun. I I, I have a few guys like a like I have, I'm very big on trust. To tell you the truth. That's so that's what like I, I yeah. need trust in order to feel good. I'm 36, you know. I was like, I don't, I can't just be yeah throwing caution to the wind anymore. I know that's the thing. I listen. What what's a beautiful thing 
about the place that I'm in in my life right now. Like we're here in Montreal, whatever. And, you know, you know, you, you, you know, there's been times where I, you know, I've come to this fest, you know, eight years ago or whatever. And you're like, you know, you're, you're looking to hook up and then you wake up the next day and then you're like, what did I do? And you have to. But that's like something, I, by the way, I avoided. That's the one thing about being gay in comedy is when I start back in my day, when I started at the Creek 12 years ago, yeah. you know, 10 years ago, whatever. It was very it was me and Tim. Like we were the, only, the gays. only gays. Yeah. And, you know, um. Just for, I mean, obviously then there was like Joel Kambuster and a bunch of other people who like, he moved to New York. Anyways, in my small group that I was seeing at my open mics, right. it was very few gay people. And so I, that was the one thing in comedy I completely avoided was like, and I'm sure Tim would agree with this too. It was like, we just did, we didn't deal with like the drama of dating this person or, did no. I date, or did, what did I, who did I fuck when I, we were just like, oh, comedy. And then sex was like a separate a thing. A separate thing. Yeah. Because I realized like, it's just like, you know, to wake up. Every day and know for a fact, you know, I don't have an STD is just such a good feeling. Or I don't have anybody pregnant. Like, you, well, maybe just well, pregnant. That's like, that's like the crazy thing. It's like y'all yeah. fucking. It's like we create people. Yeah, I'm like that's <laughs> wild yeah. to me. Yeah. That is crazy. I know. So you don't want kids. You you wouldn't no. like to get a partner and adopt. Actually, or Andrew Schultz was like, you're Italian or Mexican and you don't want kids. And I was like, someone has to stop us. <laughs> someone has. <laughs> It's Italian, Mexican. too much. You see, you know, and we, I've said this on last, I think I said this on last week's Christy Chaos, right, Pimp? Where I said, when I go to Italy, which is going to happen in potentially March or April, I want to fully go to Italy as a gay man. Mm -hmm. I want to, for those two weeks only, I want to be fully gay. I'm not talking about, you Just know. Just go to the Vatican. And that, that's where I should – is that where the most most of the gays are? Yes, it's like the capital of gays. Interesting because I just feel like a gay Italian man mm -hmm. has I, – I was trying to say on the podcast last week who I think has more fun, an overweight black woman or a gay Italian man who um, has a four – who has – because those are very rambunctious, big-time personalities that always look at they're having a great time. Well, they, you know what's so funny is like the Italians are a little more um, closeted in Italy because the, the Vatican. Oh, so it's not. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, like in Spain, everyone in Spain is like you know gay and out and running, running around. I am so that. gay. Yeah, with the yeah. list. <laughs> I, I am so gay in Spain. Hola, yo soy gay. Sí, es natural de hablar con acento así en España porque Um, yeah. but yeah, uh, in Italy. Italy, they're like a little more like like I remember I was texting this guy on Grinder in Italy this summer and we were messaging back and forth and he would not show me a picture of his face and he was just his cock J yeah okay. and I was like it was like I was like what? it's a Hunter Biden move and then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually I mean it's smart yeah you know would you but, do you think Hunter Biden's hot all, uh, Hunter Biden was the side. drug addict one, yeah. right? Well, yeah, he's good looking, I thought. Uh, see, that's what I thought. That's what I've been saying. Wait, about. can you pull up a picture? Because now yeah. I can't remember. And pull up, yeah. Well, Joe Biden was really hot back in the day. Joe Biden like, was hot back was in the like, day? Do you really see pictures? What? Of that's the name of the episode. Okay, Joe Biden is hot. I got a young picture of Hunter Biden because he's now he's getting a little longer. Well, he's, he's cracked up. But wow, that, I've Biden never heard this so take. old. That Joe Biden was hot back in the day. Look at young Joe Biden after this. Uh, I, I, You know, he's good looking enough. Is he hot? No. No, like JFK Jr. was hot. Was it In terms hot? of political people. We yeah. look up young Joe Biden. Wow, Joe Biden. young Joe Biden. I've literally, a lot of times. No, on the, he was hot. This was going around the gays. Wow, look at young Joey B. I know, he was cute. And now oh. he's like, oh, just Now so he's just old. weird. Wow, young Joe Biden was legitimately a good looking guy. Also, the Prime Minister of Canada has a nice ass. Justin he can Trudeau? fucking get it. Look at Justin Trudeau's ass. Yeah, I like some of Justin Trudeau's older oh work. Oh my god, he's so hot. It's like not even fair. Like <laughs> I'm upset. Yeah, Trudeau. I would so break Trudeau my can sex get it. Quarantine. Oh, look a butt. Ass is not gonna. Get Justin genuine. Trudeau butt. B u t t. Yeah. Boom. Wow. He's got a nice butt. So in so so yeah because I I'm self conscious about my butt I have a big what, what about your butt I have just have a big long butt you guys a long want, butt you guys want tight I have this kind of butt like a like perky butt that's what and that's what a gay man wants yes that's what people want I wonder if <laughs> are women into butts you think a woman is I, attracted by a man's butt I always have a joke when I hate when women are like we love butts too I love to grab a butt when I have sex I'm like that's like ordering pasta to smell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like you're either gonna go for it or you're not. You know, but I feel like men are not as aware of their asses as they yeah. should be because 
It is a sexual organ. You can get a full orgasm in your ass. But I think men are like very afraid of their yeah. asses, you know, because they don't want to be gay. Yeah, Jasmine told me she was like, you know, she was like the, with you. She was like, I was like, oh, you know, look at I'm I'm chubby or I'm, you know, just having like body dysmorphia issues. And she's like, you look like a fucking strong guy that throws the kids in the pool. That's all women want to see <laughs> is you just look like you have big shoulders and you'll throw the kids. Yeah, you have like you're like I remember when I first met you. I was like, geez, like you look like a like a Greek like you got like a your profile strong. You look like Ganon Ganondorf from Zelda. Look Pull up, up Ganondorf. Ganondorf from Zelda. I mean, this, you look like a strong guy. I was like, my God, Chris Stefano is like... Strong, yeah, but I'm weak emotionally. Like like his profile on his face. Like, yeah. look, not that one. That's a bad picture. Yeah. But like, just a strong, like a thick neck, like Roman nose, like yeah. that one right there. That's yeah. you. Like That's, okay. You're ready to like... I got Ganondorf. <laughs> that's, you, <head>. yeah. <laughs> that's who you are. Royal murder. That's what your yeah. name should be. <laughs> um... I uh yeah man I you know I feel like oh, what what is it? oh the oh oh this one I want to talk about the pope's so here we pull up an article that says the pope's apology to indi indigenous people doesn't go far enough Canada says now have you listened have you done the shows where they do the public apology before the comedy show have you heard this uh, have they done this at, at your well shows? I've done shows before where they're like and that's how Susan died. <laughs> Next yeah. is uh, you know no, in Canada for this comedy festival legally stop by, it by the laws of Canada before every single show that you've done you might not have heard it because maybe you're get, not getting to the show or you're just in the green room preparing they do like a two minute pre recorded thing of a Canadian uh, no. I don't know if it's a politician or whomever apologizing to the indigenous people for stealing their land what yes this is how crazy Canada is like literally. First of all, let's just start here. The Catholic Church, it's you got to do a little more than say you're sorry. Sorry. It's like not even just thousands of people, <clears throat> cultures wiped out. By the Catholics, I, I mean, know. South America, Central yeah. America, where yeah. else have they destroyed? F the Catholic Church? I mean, Everything. I, literally. The only one they didn't get was, it, was Israel, but we're trying. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, 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 um, yeah, the Catholic, so, so. The Catholic Church also, they I didn't know this, they have a doctrine that they're I've been it's all over the Canadian news. I was listening this morning. They have a doctrine still that's still in effect from like the, the twelfth century that says they have manifest destiny over any land like where their church is. So like it's That's a manifesto shit. I know. It's not listen, it's not gonna be ever enforced, but the like just the principle. Well, because of now they're the aging popular girl in high school. She was the girl that was rambunctious in high school and got whatever the fuck she wanted. And now all of a sudden at their high school reunion, she has not aged well. Right. And she's going around trying to make apologies because she's like, hey, we were in math together, remember? <laughs> and you're like, get away from me. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow to Haley Bieber, I fucked your dad in the bathroom. You know what? Work. We, what? <laughs> Honestly, she better work. Well, it's but because that's not. E but is that even? Let me ask you this: As Gwyneth Paltrow, would you even be? Because that's fucking one of the lesser Baldwin's, right? If like, I had any question to ask Gwyneth Paltrow, I'm not asking about who she fucked. Yeah, I don't care. I've got lots of questions for Gwyneth Paltrow. What if you could be? If you could go into any famous actress's body. And just be them for a day. Who would you be? I would. Oh, my God. This is incredible. like in their life. I would be Mariah. Wow. And I would. Um, but I just only get one day. One day. That's that's why this is hard. One. Just one day of their life. Now, knowing the history of their oh. life, you could pick the one day you want to be them. Fuck. If I could get one. I, the Queen of England. You want to be the Queen of England for I one would. day? That's <laughs> just hello. Pick it. And, you know, I just want like I want to. I want to like. I feel like eventually one day you will be the Queen of England. Yes. I just, you just give off that vibe. Like uh, you're, you're going to make it happen. Thank you. Um, I would like to have uh, tea with Paddington. I mean, just like for one day, just to be like Methuselah, and then she dresses like an Easter egg. You know, I would love yeah. to see like. Who's dressing her? What's she having for breakfast? Like, what's she doing? Yeah, like, I can't, you ever think about, like, like, does the Queen of England take a shit? Like, where does she... I think she takes a, as a heavy shit. <laughs> like, just a... Like, yeah, because that British food... Listen, I love the UK, and I'm coming to the UK, hopefully in October. Well, I'm definitely coming to the UK, too. <laughs> this, this is why I'm, I'm coming to the UK to do shows, but it's because the New York Giants, my favorite football team, are playing a game there, so I'm like, I gotta go.
And um, You're so strange. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go, and we're gonna go do shows. But I will say, shout out to UK. Looking very forward to co uh, coming. But the food is terrible there. The food, it's just no. The it's, food, it's getting better. Is it? it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was hard. I was just in London, but I was in Italy the week before. I okay. took a little mini vacation to Rome, and then I went to London. That's a hard contrast. Yeah, right. But the food is pretty good. The service there. We're so used to American service, right? Right. Where they come up to your table and it's literally like the Rockettes. Like right. they've got a whole show for you. In London, they're a little more like, oh, you're right, it's <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even know your name. Right. You know what I mean? Like in Italy, they're a lot nicer too. Yeah, Italy. But the food's better. The food's better. So, it, and you know what? And I take it back what I said about the, about the food in the UK. Because the truth is, I don't have any taste and smell since COVID. So Do it doesn't really matter taste anyway. Or smell? Um, it's like 60% back. 60 do you know what? I have I've had COVID three times. You know COVID and, three times? Yes, yes. Oh my god. I had the original COVID, which I call COVID Y two K. And it, <laughs> it was so funny because all the gays were getting it. At, like all my gay friends were getting sick and all my straight friends were like, it's coming. And my gay friends were like, it's not that bad. But <laughs> I, Thank I, you to the gay community for getting all the diseases first. We, we appreciate are it. Fashionable. You are so, our front lines. You literally are our front lines. Yeah, you're you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Spoon, I love it. I literally don't know if I've eaten anything else for breakfast other than Magic Spoon in the past six months. I actually, you know what I've been doing lately too with Magic Spoon because it's got so much protein. I mean, literally 14 grams of protein. I've been eating, and only 140 calories, I've been eating it after a workout with a protein shake. So I'm like, bang, I'm getting all this protein. It tastes great. Literally, if you want to eat the cereals that you used to eat as a kid, but with no guilt and literally like good for you, Magic Spoon's a cereal for you. My kids love it. I love it. It literally checks every box, serves every purpose. The blueberry muffin flavor, blow your balls off, okay? I love it. Cookies and cream, cinnamon roll, honey nut, peanut butter. I mean, classic cocoa, fruity. They're the best. It's low-carb, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and only 140 calories, and those 14 grams of protein. Mwah. You're going to get a sweet discount right now if you go to magicspoon.com slash chaos and use the promo code chaos. That's magicspoon.com slash chaos. Promo code chaos, $5 off your order. Magic Spoon, thank you for sponsoring this episode and my bod. Listen, fantasy's coming back, baby. I'm telling you, prize picks, this is the one you should use. Daily fantasy, make entries on prize picks, player projections, you can do a whole bunch of things. How it works is you pick two to five players, and if they go score more or less than their prize picks, picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Safe and fast withdrawals, um, currently operating in over 30 states plus Canada. They offer projections on any sport that you watch, NFL, NBA, MLB, etc. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. All you have to do is download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com. That's P R I Z E P I C K S.com. Sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users are going to get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code CHAOS. So that's a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 that you put in with the promo code chaos, okay? That means if you deposit 100, prize picks gives you 100. If you deposit 50, prize picks gives you 50. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com, enter that promo code chaos, sign up and get that instant deposit match of $100. Send me your results, bubs. And uh, <laughs> no, but but I remember the there's okay, I have to start asking people. The one thing that changed with me with the smell, okay. there's a certain cologne <clears throat> that guys wear that now smells like to not like it smells so horrible like if i smell it I'm like <gasps> like i can't even be around it well, which one is i it? don't know i'm gonna just ask some guy when i smell it i'm gonna say excuse me i love that cologne what is yeah. that cologne but really you're retching <laughs> yeah. yes because I, i've never smelled it before and then once i got covid all of a sudden that that smell is fucking weird and i've heard that your taste your sense of smell can change on certain things but you know what i think has happened to me, and I think it's probably happened to a lot of people with COVID, is our taste and smell changed. It got knocked out. And now we're just so hyper aware of tasting and smelling that I think we're just thinking about it all the time. And we probably smelled and tasted the same 10 years ago. We just, you just never thought about it. I remember losing my sense of smell. Was was that very upsetting to you? I well, yeah, it was like we were, we were, everyone was quarantined and, and I was making 
sauce and I remember tasting it thinking like why I kept putting salt in it. I was like how am I not tasting my oh. sauce but it was, it was such at the beginning of the pandemic that you know when it like a week later the New York Times had an article like hey there's a sign like if you can't smell you probably have COVID how long how long um before it came back like but just two weeks and okay. then it came back yeah I right. remember being able to taste it again I was like <gasps> Yeah, uh, yummy. Okay. I have a question for you. Uh, oh, yes. What country is the most elite gays? Elite like, gays? Yeah, who's top, the best top, gays? Top, we're talking top shelf, well, you know, 1,800 like tequila gays. going to Spain or everyone's obsessed with yeah, Spain. Yeah, what's with Spain and being Spain gay? Spain and yeah. the gays. Like, you know, and of course, like my, my ex is in Spain. We're still r really close. but I'm I like, miss that guy. I like that guy. He, I love gay gay. But, um, Was that his real name? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that but he, he just... Know, actually blurted out because he asked me not to say oh, his so name. Oh, so, all right, we'll edit it out. I'm going to edit it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Great. I thought like literally because the way his name well it's edited out, but I just thought like that was a slant like you were calling him that because you're like oh this is like a Pokemon yeah like, this like is Squirtle yeah 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 <laughs> I'm dating Squirtle like yeah, this yeah. is Squirtle yeah bow my sir bow my sir but uh, so and, but anyways it seems to me like Spain seems to be well New York obviously but it just depends on where you're from but I mean I don't elite gays whatever to me like I don't know. Yeah. Lesbians, wherever the lesbians are, wherever that's the, elite gay to me. Well, the internet well, saying the Netherlands. We pull up the the, the gayest the country in the world. The Netherlands is considered the most gay. Being friendly the gayest country, country in the world or most friendly gay does not make it the most elite. I'm just <laughs> yeah. throwing that out there. Yeah, yeah. It was the first country in the world to legalize same sex marriage in 2000. That's what I was trying to find out before, like who was kind of the front lines, like who accepted the gays first, and it is the Netherlands. Um, all right, good, good. I gayest think gayest cities in America. And Chicago's not even on there. New York is number one. What is this with San Francisco? It's see, New York. See, here's the thing, Mateo, and I don't want you to think like, oh, we're doing like gay heavy stuff because you're on the show. This is every episode. Yeah. Literally, no, I, I swear I to God, this like this you. is literally <laughs> every episode. We're doing this, pulling this stuff up. We're not leaning into it because like we're going to talk to you about other shit. We this is just about this is what? actually less gay. I have, this I have, is the <laughs> least amount of gay stuff we've done on a chaos podcast. Yeah, I should have just brought my speedo and I could have wore my speedo and done the whole thing. Oh, that would have been great. Um, all our, yeah, our just fans jerking off. Um, so pull up because uh, Venetia. Venet yeah, here we go. So we like to do on we have you know different segments. First of all, we have a segment on the show called "I Am Poppy," okay. where I talk about um, uh, you know something that you know I learned being a parent or something uh, uh, that I helped with with the kids, something I learned. And okay. I also like to ask the guests first. Do you have any stories about? kids or, or parent you know parenting but you don't have any kids or do no, you have anything I, that you I, know i was raised by my mother and her my aunt cindy we were all raised together so me and my cousin i love aunt all, cindy you, oh you met my aunt i cindy. met aunt cindy she came to a show yes that's right she's I, great aunt I cindy told you, like if you see a little mexican woman walking yeah. up to you that's my aunt cindy well the vibe i got from aunt cindy is this lady is awesome and she will get blackout drunk at a family barbecue um, my aunt Cindy did love to party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. a good time. She's no. also one of those honest people. Like, I love her. It's like, like, just a quick example of like how quick she's going to get to the truth. We were sitting at the table. My cousin Kelly, I was, she was talking about her friend and she was like, oh, she's dating this new guy. And I go, oh, is he good looking? And she goes, um, my aunt Cindy goes, all right, you waited too long. The answer is no. Now move it along. You're not good looking. Stop it. So, but I love my aunt Cindy. And I met her in Vegas. Yes. Yeah. She loved you. She was she great, was aunt Cindy. And I and she and my mom basically raised me and my cousins. We all okay. each of my cousins all the same age. So my cousin Kelly's a month younger than me. My sister's a year older than me. She's got my cousin Megan, who's like we're all the same age, right? Where's your dad? My dad. My I mean, my, you know, my dad and Uncle Mike. They're yeah. they're both cops, so they were always yeah. like like. Well, I got I got to go work, you know, <laughs> yeah, so it was yeah. always like the women were yeah, raising yeah. us and stuff. And um, although my Uncle Mike were constantly fighting with my Uncle Mike for fun. Right. Like he broke his leg and it was in, like he like we we're sitting at the kitchen table and someone ran by and he's like, I wish I could run. And we were all like, no, you don't want to run to stop it. You've never run. This family <laughs> never supports me. <laughs> I will say growing up, they were very like the same like i like if i had to become a parent today all those instincts would come back into me and right. it would be like we have a routine we wake up at this time we we eat breakfast at this time we yeah. nap at this time you go to bed at this time see because that, that that i'm happy you said that because that's what the i am poppy segment uh the i am poppy uh advice i have for the week is that's what jasmine and i uh have started to do is 
you know, the kids were getting a little out of hand. Stepson, Delilah, were getting a little hand. Violet is one. And what Violet's trying to do, oh, what Violet's trying to do now is take off her own diaper. And she's smoking and shit, already. Yeah, she, yeah, she's trying to shit and piss on the floor like a fucking house cat. And, and, and she, um, but, but what we've done is because we, now we have something. Kids really do well with like visual stuff and like where they can see it. So on the fridge, we have a sheet. Now, with their chores, what they have to do, and a system, and at the end, if they can each get five stars, if they get one star a day, and they can get five stars. That's I, I did that when I was little. And it's helping. I'm telling yeah. you, we've only had it implemented for the last two weeks, and the last two weeks, those kids have gotten five stars, and it and it well, works. it's like in December, kids are always the best behaved because there's a threat they're not going to yeah. get presents. So just yeah. keep that going all year round. Yeah, because we had to, because last month, you know, like, Delilah was going off, like, just screaming, like, not listening, and I was like, Delilah, I will take the trip away in the car. I was like, I will take the trip to Disney away we will not go to disney and she was like i know you can't take the trip away because you already put it on your credit card and i was like i can still take it away and she was like yeah. you can't get she was like you can't get a refund on an airbnb <laughs> like she knew like and she knew the truth i swear to god like jasmine was like what why do you think that that's true she's like because i heard you and daddy talking about it that you can't get a refund and the airbnb is really expensive and she was like, so you're not going to take away oh Disney. And God. then she just sat there like a little fucking bitch. <laughs> and I was like, okay. You know? And then it doesn't matter what I do. If I'm like, I'll take that away. She's like, no, you're not. Or my, I, I remember my mom was such a, like, we, ne I, I, she really was like a disciplinarian in the sense that like, we never misbehaved in public. I remember one time yeah. I, she's like, we were in the grocery store and I started throwing a temper tantrum. She dropped all the groceries, grabbed me and, th and put, put me in the car and took me home. She was yeah. like, I'm not playing around. And I remember one time I was talking to my friend Chuck. My, I had a friend who had a kid who was young, and the kid just did whatever it wanted at restaurants, running around, eat whenever it wanted, slept whenever it wanted. And they were two. And I said, okay, they like need to be on a schedule. And my friend Chuck was like, no, they're like two. That's too much like regulation. Like they're two. And I called Mance, and he was like, does a two-year-old need to be on a, on a schedule or what? She goes, Mateo, she goes, I was changing clothes the other day, and the woman next to me had her daughter, who was 13, and she turned to her mom and said, you dumb bitch. And my aunt Cindy goes, and it started when she was that big. Yes. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And I, like, I can't – like, when I was 13, all of a sudden my aunt Cindy changed. Yeah. She went from just another version of my mother to, like, okay, yeah. we were raised. Now we can have fun with aunt right. Cindy. But, like, when I was a kid, it was like – Bedtime this time, there's going to be consequences. Yeah. Like, we're all just raised that way. Well, that's – and see, and that's the thing is, is people don't talk about this enough, is you can't hit – you can't hit the kids anymore. No more spoon throwing? No more spoon throwing. You can't do that. So now what happened – because Jasmine is a disciplinarian, um, and so she'll like – because I'm just – you know, I just want to throw them in the – I just want to have fun with them. I want to talk to them. Like, I kind of agree with them a lot. I'm like, she, you're, I know it's fucking great. These rules are bullshit. I wish we didn't have to do this, but your mom's like – I love you, Chris. Your mom's like the Puerto Rican Hitler. And, <laughs> and, 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 so, and, and so what happens is it's like, you know, Jasmine – Jasmine just, you know, she, she, you know, she has to discipline the kids, but it's like, you know, you want to just hit them, but then I wind up getting hit. Uh, <laughs> I just get beat into a corner <laughs> <laughs> and also your little one started talking and yeah violet crazy. literally i literally you heard it yesterday i was facetiming with the kids and i this it's just like when it hits you like oh my god I, she will facetime with the kids and you know delilah's like hi daddy hi daddy you know talking show me this show me that and tristan's just sitting there with like a slug head on he's like hello because he's just like <laughs> he's like wants to play video games all the time he just has this hat that's a slug he's like Egh. Uh, you know, and then Jasmine's, you know, looking, you know, look, looking at me, but looking past me to see if there's women behind me. And, 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 and it's me. And she's yeah, like, I knew it. Yeah. Um, and then Violet, like, you know, who, you know, says, you know, like, Bob, Bob, whatever, like little words. She goes, Daddy. And I was like, oh, oh. my God. And then I was like, you heard that. Everybody heard that. Everybody heard that. And um, see, I'll never get that from a chihuahua. <laughs> You'll get that from your guy from Spain. That's um, true. Yeah, because they don't speak English, so it sounds like a kid is yeah. saying English <laughs> words for the first time. Yeah. Um, but I'm not being called daddy. Let's be honest. I know. The bottom. But um, <laughs> I hope I wasn't being rude. I wasn't when I was talking about like my growing up in childhood, like my aunts and aunts. No, like no, that. no. I realize I'm like, oh my god, does this sound like I'm giving advice? Because I'm like not. No, I, I appreciate it. As now. a matter of fact, I'm gonna when I get back to New York, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start telling the kids, you want me to start acting like Aunt Cindy? Because I fucking will. Oh, send Aunt Cindy over there. <laughs> I'm going to start FaceTiming Aunt Cindy and be like, you help should. me, Cindy. Um, okay. We could call her right now. Do you want to call Aunt Cindy? I wonder if she's awake. Uh, uh, Is it, does she live in Vegas? No, she lives in uh, she lives in um, Chicago? Uh, Chicago. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So what is it? It's 9 o'clock there. 
Let me see. I'm Let's see if Aunt text Cindy's her. awake. Aunt, Aunt. Aunt Cindy. I like, so I, when I had my sitcom pilot, if the show would have gotten on the air, my aunt was, or the deal was already signed. I have an Aunt Eileen, mm -hmm. who, we, who we named Aunt Colleen in the show, who's similar to your Aunt Cindy, like disciplinarian. She smokes cigarettes. My, my Aunt Eileen smoking cigarettes and like, you know, like lives a life like that. And she was going to be played, deal signed by Cindy Lauper. Really? Cindy Lauper was going to play my aunt in the show. Oh. Cindy, you ever met Why? Cindy Lauper? No, but I know that Cindy Lauper <laughs> talks like this. <laughs> Cindy Lauper was fucking great, and she literally, she was like, oh, yeah, she was like um, the coolest lady. She's like, I'll play your aunt. She's like, I know exactly who this woman is. And, um, and yeah, so always, anytime I hear the name Cindy, I think of Cindy Lauper. She was great. Yeah, my, my aunt Cindy does not have much in common with Cindy Lauper. But, um, yeah, I've, I've, now I'm going to feel bad about that the rest of the day. Wait, feel bad. I'm, I'm confused. Feel bad I'm, about what? I'm super Catholic and I feel really bad and guilty. I'm like, about, wait, but about what part? About that because you told me how to raise my kids? No, but that's what I'm I wasn't saying that. I was telling you yeah, how I was going to say that. You asked me about because I'm like, well, I remember how I was raised and I realized, am I saying this to Chris? No. Like the whole day, you know, like when we're like, you're the same way. You're like, did that bother you? Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I'm but sorry. that, but no, 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 no. But that's, but that literally is, the, the, is a difference. You uh, see, the thing is now, the, the kids who we can't – first of all, if I discipline my child in public the way your aunt or mom correctly disciplined you when you got crazy in the supermarket, that's what every – that's what I wish we could do now. If I did that now, I'd be arrested. I would be arrested. <laughs> I, it'd be a citizen's arrest by the other shoppers for damaging my child – you know, for, for abusing my child, for whatever. And then – so that – it's just the thing is we have to have like this kind of balance where – listen, if, if they get crazy – like I absolutely will be like I'll. There are times where I'll put my foot down and be like, "All right, enough." Like I, I can't, you know, stop. Jazz is more. Like, jazz has got the thing where the kids know they can push me and push me and push me, and I'll probably do nothing. But Aww. Jasmine can't be pushed. You push Jasmine a fucking inch, and that's it. It's done. And she doesn't mind being the one that's like being like I have to be the disciplinarian because the man I've had a child with is a fucking little pussy <laughs> so that's what it is <laughs> and she's okay in that role but no I I think listen honestly first of all I think that anytime I'm getting advice from you I think it's good advice because I but I, I, just you, I wasn't soliciting it as advice. I was just saying this is how I – you were like, do you have any stories about being – Oh, yeah. Parenting. And I was listen, like, I just remember how my parents raised listen, me. Listen, I'm not going to listen to parenting advice from Pimp. He's going to be like, oh, just give the kid a Heineken. Well, also don't listen to me. I'm going to say give him some K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, some you know, if they're, if, they're, if they're rowdy, give him some poppers. Send him to some, bed. So we tried to do poppers with Joey Camasta mm -hmm. on the podcast a month or two ago, and uh, it's just not for me. That's for when you're having sex. It's not just for fun. But why is oh, it because okay. when you're having sex? Well, for me, because I'm bottoming, it like kind of loosens everything up. Uh -huh. But it really does make everything feel so good. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder yeah. if T.T. Jerry's ever done poppers. Though. Yes. Uh, had to. Right? Had yes. to have, right? They got to do that in jail, right? Not in jail, man. Oh, I don't think God. they have poppers in jail. I got, like, I got an update. From T.T. Jerry. Got some unfortunate news. What? So T.T. Jerry, um, she's fine, by the way. She had, uh, uh, she had COVID. Uh, uh, you know, she took the, the Paxlovid drug. Um, uh, Does that work? Yeah, yeah. She's, she literally got better in 24 hours. Wow. So, but the news <clears throat> is, is we've been talking. We've been looking forward to a moment with T.T. Jerry. Her prison boyfriend, Scar, was due to get out in November. No. Fortunately, Killed somebody in prison and he's Mufasa. coming out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, killed Mufasa yeah. in prison. There was a fight and allegedly stabbed someone. Prison. He stamp sent a stampede. And now, yes, and now Scar. <laughs> yeah, Whoopi Goldberg and him. They, yeah, yeah that, that they they. So Scar's not getting out. So Titi's very upset. What was that she song Scar sang in Lion King? Uh, 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 I'm oh yeah, yeah. That you know. What Scar is gay, right? Gay is a picnic basket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Are you uh, kidding me? Gay is a picnic um, basket. Oh, that's right. Be prepared. <laughs> yeah. 
when you said gay is it, I know you said And be prepared is about douching. Sorry, go on. <laughs> be prepared is about douching. <laughs> when you said gay is a picnic basket last night, I was, we, me and Pip were dying oh. laughing. I know you said it's from the Golden Girls, yes. but the way you delivered it was fucking hilarious. Oh, thank so you. Funny. Yeah. Sophia, so there was there was a character, Blanche's brother was gay, but no one knew he was gay, right? And so Dorothy knew, and so it was kept a secret. And so Sophia goes, the older one, she goes, whatever this secret is, I can smoke it out of him in three questions. So he walks through, <laughs> and she goes, good timing. Uh, so, Clayton, you enjoy Enjoying this Miami weather? Oh, yes. Interesting. Have you ever been to Europe? No, but it's always been a dream of mine. I see. How many fingers am I holding up? Two? Fine. You can go back in the living room now. He walks in the living room and she just goes, the man's as gay as a picnic basket. <laughs> and the audience <laughs> dies. I mean, the audience is screaming. If you could go back in time in history, if I could put you in a moment, yeah. do you think being in the audience for a Golden Girls No, episode. I would be sitting at, I would be in Tosca in 1964 in front row watching Maria Callas sing what? Tosca. And it's an what opera. What is that? She's an opera. It's opera singer. Oh, wow. I would be, that, that's where I would be. Or like if I could get to Streisand in the 1960s when she was opening for Phyllis Diller in the uh, well, village. I'm, I'm going to put you, I'm going to put you in a, in a tough spot right now. And I'm going to, I'm going to play. Uh, a fuck Mary Kill game with you, and it's gonna it's really hard. Okay, this one. I'm, okay? I'm ready. We're gonna do Fuck Mary Kill with you. Okay. Fuck Mary Kill. These are the three Mariah Carey, oh, God. Barbara Streisand, oh, no. The Golden Girls. Well, I would probably marry Streisand because I think we'd get along. She's kind of a recluse. She's yeah. got her nice house. She right. really loves good cooking. Yeah. Um, she, you know, she watches the news. Okay. Like, and, and she seems stable. Okay. Um, I guess I would fuck Mariah. And I don't. And, Interesting. And, and, and I'm obsessed with Mariah Carey. But I could I marry Mariah Carey? No. By the That's way, I, I want I want to just can, I want to just add a little caveat to this because you know to to make it uh, appealing for you, you can turn anybody you want to fuck into a man for the game. No, I want them exactly the way they are. Oh, you want to fuck Mariah as a woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, uh, but yeah. And, and it would be kind. Of, I mean, it would be almost like I was doing a photo shoot. There probably have to be the right lighting. Right. It have to be the right time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like only yeah. from certain angles. Yeah. And I'm fine with that and yeah. um i think she strikes me as someone who talks a lot about sex but i don't think she also engages in a lot of sex either i think she's okay. like also tr you have to, she has to trust you yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i mean and she would always talk about like i've had sex with like th this many people like i can fit it on my hand or whatever and uh so i would probably have sex with her just because it would be just a remarkable experience you know okay. like how people talk about when they go to the safari right like what right. it was like you know right. being that close and stuff it would be similar to me right um and then i'd have to kill the golden girls because they're already dead <laughs> yeah. oh, is every golden girl dead yeah all of them all of them we lost them all betty was the last one have you died. ever had sex with a woman no no i'm not the farthest I got, farthest I got was making out with uh, like girls when i would like Date girls in high school when I was working at Michael's. Do you think you ever would want to try it? I'm not opposed to it. I'm not one of those gays like, oh, vaginas. You know, I'm not, I don't feel that way towards vaginas. I'm just gay. So I right. don't, I'm not sexually um, wow. invigorated by wow. vaginas. But I would be certainly disappointing to the woman. Like, do you think, like, let me, I just always have this thought. Dave is a banking app. That's all you got to know. If you live in paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses come up, okay? Dave can help you out of a pinch when you really need it. Hindsight is twenty twenty, bub. So if you can't change the past, but what if you can? But what you can do is get a little help from your future self. All you got to do is ask Dave. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. There is no interest and no credit check. That's huge. Okay. All you got to do is download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D. A V E sign up for extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer fees. Apply banking provided by evolve member FDIC your future. You will thank you. This podcast is about getting you money, baby. Patreon.com slash Christy comedy is the place to be. It is where the real fans are. The Puerto Ricans. We're going to start doing TT Jerry's bucket list again over there where we take TT Jerry, uh, who was in prison for 20 years and we do things with her that she wasn't able to do because she was deprived because she was behind bars. We're going to start doing episodes on edibles. We're going to start doing uh, history segments there where we go around and film stuff like we did with Benjamin Franklin impersonator. All the funds at patreon.com slash Christy comedy plus 75 plus hours of just podcast episodes that only exist at patreon.com com slash Christy comedy go become a Puerto Rican go become a Newport those gays like oh vaginas you know I'm not I don't feel that way towards vaginas I'm just gay so I right. don't I'm not sexually 
um, wow. invigorated by wow. vaginas. But I would be certainly disappointing to the woman. Like, do you think, like, let me, I just always have this thought. Like, people are just like, oh, if you had, like, six months to live, like, you know, like, you had cancer and six months to live. You like, know what's well, funny? I would never think about having sex with a woman. Like, if I had six months to live and all the things I would do, that would not be on my list. Of See, for me, it's always, like, the same thing. It's always, like, if I had six months to live, I'd want to go skydiving. Like, because, like, I don't know why. Because and I, anal. Yeah, well, it's got, no, I, I just want to suck a dick just to see what it felt like, like just to see what well, it. Well, you don't have to have six months to live if you're curious about sucking a dick. You can no, I know, do that. I know, but I, but that's I get the thing. it. I There's... don't want to do it. It would just be, it would just, the reason why I do it, it wouldn't even be a gay, I know it's the gayest thing you do, but it'd just yeah, be like, like <laughs> no, it'd just be like to com really have like the full human experience. I'd rather you, you try bottom. Everything. Yeah. Then sucking a dick. I don't know. It's yeah. not. It's never. It's more work, really, than it is anything. Interesting. Yeah. What time? At least the getting fucked. Like you're experiencing something completely new. Yeah. You've had a hot dog. Yeah. That's true. I've had a hot dog and I've sucked a dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, here we go. Facts about Montreal. We always like to do a little Christy. Oh, I did want to go back go. to Scar for a minute. Let's go back. What to Scar. should TT do? TT's now dating this man. So Scar, I don't think I don't think I did a good enough job of explaining who Scar is. Scar uh, 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 in jail. Uh, Jerry dated a man named Scar. Uh, I forgot what his real name was. We, we pulled it up, but he, his nickname Simba. was Scar. Right, Simba. <laughs> yeah. So she. Um, they were dating, whatever, and then he was scheduled to get out of prison in a few months. What's he in prison for? You know, dr drugs, I think he's robbery. a violent offender. Yeah. yeah, he's a violent offender, gang guy. Okay. But right. we, we were being told, very nice guy. We were going to meet him, you know, whatever, take him out to dinner and all that stuff. And it was like Jerry's going to, like, you know, like partner out here, and he's not getting out now. It was, so she's up. It's like it's almost like she was like, it's almost like my, he's dead, like he's out. Um, do I have any advice on this? Please, I can't think of, yes. I, I am so far, I have more parenting advice than I do. I, I love can't, this. I can't even begin to wrap my mind around what that looks like. Yeah. But I'm also like, I have problem dating. You know, I also love unavailable men, which sounds like maybe she also shares this experience with me. Yeah. And she also said like, she's now that he's not coming home. She's like, I don't want to date. I just don't want to do it. She goes, I just want to live. I want to live out my days. I don't want to deal with this, this stress. I don't Is want to. Is she a golden girl? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! Could you imagine a fucking remake of the oh Golden Girls god. with? Uh, and she would play Blanche. She'd be Blanche. Who would you be? It's Dorothy, no question. Dorothy. And then who were the other two? There was Sophia and Rose. Sophia and Rose. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Um, who would be the new Golden Girls? Uh, we'd have Matteo. We'd have TT. Matteo De Rosa. Joe DeRosa. Oh, my God. <laughs> Joe DeRosa. Joe DeRosa. Can you imagine him being, I just think that the kitchen should be cleaner. <laughs> my God. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I couldn't imagine. That was, a, that was one house. of the best DeRosa oh, impersonations I've heard good. in a while. That was oh good. God. Um, I love Joe DeRosa. Yeah. Like, a deep love for Joe DeRosa. Yeah, I feel like half our fan base does. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other half despises him. Um... <laughs> So, okay, here we're in Montreal. Montreal. Um, Montreal. Which I love Montreal, it's actually. Montreal. Montreal. Mont Montreal. Montreal. Kind of. Okay. Uh, have you ever been to Quebec City? No. That's where I heard, like, if you want, like, old Montreal is, like, you know, that, like, old kind of cobblestone streets. Right. I heard Quebec City is an entire city of old Montreal. It's where I'm from, Céline, <laughs> where I marry my husband, René. In Quebec City, I marry him at at a theater at a, uh, a uh, cathedral right over here. In I'm one of fourteen kids. Do you ever see that Barbara Walters interview where she tells her she's like, Celine, you were not beautiful. You had pointy teeth, and the kids called you vampire girl. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> no, like Celine's no. supposed to suddenly defend herself. Skip to like, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the other one. The other. Well, there's her. That's my wedding. Yeah. There's my father, husband. There. Is she wearing like a CB2 chandelier? Yeah. <laughs> like those ones you expand over your, you know what I mean? Here we are golfing. This is her husband. He died. he passed away though, right? Yeah. Uh, Sh everyone was shocked. That he died. <laughs> He's like in his early hundreds. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she is so funny. You have to watch. There's another Celine Dion interview. She's uh, hot, Celine Dion. The, oh, that's the one. That's the one. Wait, it's at the first like minute and a half keep playing you just have to hear barbara walters say this like go to like a minute by the way and i mean this sincerely oh a thousand percent i'd fuck barbara walters yeah 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 of course i i i i'm being completely sincere here it is i need you to hear what she what barbara walters says okay 
Listen. She was not beautiful. In fact, kids poked fun at her pointy teeth and called her the vampire. Can you imagine? <laughs> like, how far we've come in interviews that Barbara Walters is like, you know what? I'm really upset that at 13, she wasn't beautiful. I believe all 13-year-olds are responsible to look as good as they possibly can. And even though she was poor and from the middle of Canada and one of 14 brothers and sisters, she should have been absolutely beautiful. Otherwise, what a waste of a voice. Now, Celine, tell us about that. I remember her asking Ricky Martin if he was gay, and it was like... What the fuck? And, yeah. Even my one year, that was my one-year-old knew that. She was like... Gay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, is she a vampire? Is she V for Vendetta in that By video? By the way, uh, uh, Ricky Martin, you, that was crazy news that you could get 50 years for incest in Puerto Rico. What? A, but but it wasn't true, that? thank God. No, it wasn't yeah. true, but thank even God, the fact Rick, that... We can't lose Ricky. We, yeah. The but gays I'm, have very little left. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I was, don't worry, if you lose him, I'll, I'll take his place. Can you um, imagine me up there like, shake your bum bum, shake your bum bum, shake your bum bum. But I couldn't believe that. 50 years for incest is a little fucking steep, dude. It's like, so what, man? You hook up with your cousin a little bit. What well, what's do? the cousin good looking? Because that's all that counts for me, Barbara Walters. I'm trying to do like Sherry O'Terry's Barbara Walters. Oh, my God. She was the best. Yeah. Um, as she pops out from under the sheets. We really went far. You mentioned poutine. I just went off. I'm so sorry. About Honestly, that. no. You know what? This is, but this is the podcast. We're not even going to talk about poutine. Um, here we go. What is, what is she saying? Oh, so other facts about Montreal. Everyone knows about poutine, but little no, more known facts is the song "Give Peace a Chance" by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. It was recorded at the Queen Elizabeth Hotel, 1960 line, 1969, during a week long bed in. What does a fucking bed in mean? Well, I'll tell you, when you're old and your brain's mush, you sit in bed for a long time. <laughs> that's what it is. Because that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And I'm still mad Celine's not better looking. <laughs> she's, her, she, uh, oh, yeah. Through most of the rest of Canada speaks English. Most of the rest of Canada speaks English as a first language. Montrealers and Quebecers are known for their French culture. 1535, when Jacques Cartier, <laughs> now has a bridge named after him, arrived in Montreal after navigating the St. Lawrence River and claimed it for France. Now, I know. Est-ce que tu parles français ou non? No, français. French fries. French fries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pommes frites. Yeah. Pommes frites. Je voudrais pommes frites. So how many languages do you speak? Um, it's like really up for debate. I'm fluent in English and Italian. Like okay. fluent. Um, and I'm really... A lot of... I'm fluent in Spanish, but I would say I'm proficient. Like... I can tell you everything about my life and have conversations with you, but I can't tell you my medical history. Mm -hmm. There'll be grammatical errors because it's really heavy influenced by my Italian. Got it. But when I talk to other Latinos, like they always kind of chuckle because I sound like Mario and Luigi. Yeah, because I feel like you go you go more with the Italian heritage than the Mexican. More more, more people, mo most people don't know you're Mexican. They know you're Italian. Well, my dad's okay. So my mom is Italian Mexican. Okay. My dad is 100 percent Irish. Now my dad's not Irish. Like oh, to teach tar. Like there was no. I don't yeah. mean, we didn't even like see his family growing up. It was all consumed by my right. mother's family. Now my mom, because I've gotten like criticisms from other Mexicans, being like, well, "I've gotten criticism from Mexicans." You don't talk about being Mexican enough, and I'm like, "Okay, well, this is why." Yeah. When my mom was 12, my grandpa, who's Mexican, my grandma's Italian, my grandpa's Mexican. He had five kids with my grandma, and also had five kids with another woman at the same time and named all the kids the same name so he didn't confuse them. Oh, my God. I so, love this. Can we get him on the podcast? You know, get Joaquin. He died. And so <laughs> so my grandmother, you know, it's like 1960-something. She divorced him and Damn. remarried a Sicilian. And I was my mom was like 13 or 14 or something at that time. So my mom grew up. Half of her life was Mexican and half of it was Italian. And then my grandma was like, nope. And then she remarried a Sicilian, so they were they weren't allowed to talk to their Mexican family anymore. So interesting. My grandpa, my real grandpa, my Mexican grandpa, um, Abolito. Abolito. Um, I met him when I was a kid. My mom and him had a reconciliation when she was in her thirties. Okay. So I had like That's nice. Yeah. So I would get like birthday cards from him and stuff like that. We called him Jack, even though his name was Joaquin. And the, he sent us pictures of family books of our family in Mexico. Like, all of our family in Mexico. And now we did 23andMe, so it's like I actually have a connection to, like, all my cousins and stuff in Mexico. But it's not my doing. I just wasn't raised with – this is my family in Mexico. Oh, wow. 
This is them. This is them. I oh mean, my god! This guy, th- his family, next to like they're wearing like sombreros. They have like thing like they. Yeah. Lo- it's like it looks like it's from they're, Coco. They what they call like indigenous, right? Or I don't know what the word now. Native to the land of Mexico. So my no. mom's twenty three. Me is literally half Italian, and then it's like Native American, Spanish, Portuguese, North yeah. Korean or North Korean, North, North Korean. African. <laughs> but she is Korean. Literally, yeah, I, because because the because if you're Native American or like native to indigenous to America, it trails back all the way to parts of Asia. So my mom is like, you know, what? small percent Korean. Yeah. That's a fact. What? If you're indigenous, so Native Americans get traced back to North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and 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 they're still looking for us, you know. Wow. But anyway, so long story short, I don't feel comfortable even I always say whenever I can like, yes, I am part Mexican. I always say court 100%, you know, but then there's this thing it's like I'm not 100% Mexican, so it would be ridiculous if I started talking, you know, like about my Mexican culture that way. And it's like, right. well, you weren't raised that way, so it's insulting that way. But then it's insulting if I don't say anything about it. Right. And, call, and at just no fault of my own, I was raised with an Italian background. Right. So I just know how to make Italian food. I know my family in Italy. But now that I'm older, I'm like, I am really interested in finding my family in Mexico or Mexican relatives. Let's go find your family in Mexico. Our last name is Maldonado. What? There it is. Mateo Maldonado. But that's a very common name in Mexico, actually. It's like the Smith of Mexico. Wow. So there's a lot of Maldonados. Here we go. At the end of every episode, we like to do... Oh. I do have a question. Are yeah. you a ghost guy at all? Any paranormal stuff? Oh, you know that I have a whole thing about ghost adventures, right? No. I love ghost adventures. What so is the whole thing about ghost Zach adventures? Zach Baggins. I love him. So I am... Obs- I've seen... First of all, ghost adventures... This is. I'm going to do a little bit of a bit here, so I don't mean to do like a late night no, show. So it's my favorite thing to talk about. It's this been is going the new on. Late night show. Ghost Adventures has been on for 19 seasons. They haven't found a single ghost yet. The whole show is grown men walking into abandoned buildings, going, "What's that?" And it's hosted by this complete piece of shit. His name is Zach. And every episode is like, "My name is Zach, and I'm a demonologist." <laughs> like, and I, the joke I say is like, "Look, my parents were disappointed when I told them I was gay. I can't imagine." Being like, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to ghosts. They'd be like, we'd rather you suck a dick. <laughs> At least it's there. But, you know, the te- and the technology on the show is amazing because they have the machines that text ghosts. Yeah. It's incredible. You're so like, Mateo, I can't. I'm just, I've watched, me and Evan Williams watched no, we've talked about this. episode no, of Ghost Adventures. We have his contact. We're trying to get him. Well, I, I met Brendan him. Brendan knows Oh, him. my God. How I was went he? to his Ghost Adventures Museum in Vegas, which really is, I mean, museum. It's a house. They boarded it up. They put in some old shit, and they're like, yeah. pay $20. <laughs> and uh, he was walking around the museum. Uh, he just walks? Walking around it. And I was like, that's Zach. And it was so funny. We went in this one room. They were like, this is... First of all, I was with another gay, right? And we were on Edible. Not and, Evan Williams. And, uh, no, man. It's, it's not Evan Williams, man. It's not, man. It's not. It's okay. It's okay, man. So maybe one, maybe one day. Maybe one day. My impression is I do a great Evan Williams and a great Joe Mackey. Um, uh, oh, yeah. my God. Have you heard my Joe Mackey? I no. Oh, oh, so Chris. Oh, oh hey, gang. Oh, so, so I... I uh, <laughs> I was at the uh, Ghost Adventures Museum, and oh boy, uh, there was there was no ghosts to be found, uh, just a lot of uh, Groupons. Oh my god, that's wow. classic, dude. Yeah. Wait a minute, how was Zach Baggins? Oh, so well, we start walking around. And we're being led by what you know, like a failed theater student, and uh, you know, very like, and this room, you know, so. And they really rush us through. So we get to this one room, and they're like, "This next room has the most haunted doll in the world. Her name is Peggy." Yeah. And we we we, or we ask you to enter at your own risk. So they open the door, and because everyone was like sort of like a middle aged woman, they they were all really believing Zach. Right. Bang, they wouldn't go in the room because they were too afraid. Well, me and my friend Brett ran in the room as fast as we could, and it was funny because they had she was there, but she was like behind like a little bit of like a thing, and then they had like a strobe light on her, and I was like, "What is she, is she like at a?" A rave? Like, is she like at a circuit party? What is it? And uh, they made us greet Peggy. They're like, you have to greet Peggy. And I was, so I literally went, work, Peggy. <laughs> the, by the way, the group hated us. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I couldn't stop laughing. So have you ever had an experience with a ghost? No, but being Italian and Mexican, I have at least one. You cannot be Italian or Mexican without having one member of your family talking to dead people. Right. So mine is my Aunt Nikki, who literally talks to dead people. Like, right. I'm not kidding you. So she does, but I, I don't believe in. What do, what do you mean by that? What okay. That so she literally, she, can like whatever that guy does uh she you know like, like does prayers and then all of a sudden she talks to like 
ghosts. What, she, like, solve crimes? What does she do with that? Well, she's definitely not solving crimes. But, you know, um, there's a lot of crimes she could solve just in my own family. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we've got axe murderers in my family. But, oh, um, good. But, yeah. Uh, like, for real, an axe murderer? Uh-huh. Wow. Oh, I probably actually edit that out. I probably shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> okay, yes, I do. Okay, nice. Okay. we got two big edits. <laughs> Fair. Sorry. Um, but, no, my Aunt Nikki, one time, so my friend Caesar in high school was having dreams that this girl, he was in Germany, and okay. this girl kept clawing at him and begging Begging him to come back and he was like I can't stop having this dream it's happening every night it feels very real so I was like all right I'm gonna call my aunt my aunt Nikki so I called my aunt Nikki and I was like and Nikki I was like I have a friend who's got a question she goes don't say anything she goes I'm gonna go do my prayers so she calls me back it's so Sicilian she calls me back in 20 minutes she's like she's like say nothing and so I just we sat there in silence I just sat there in silence uh, which is rare for an Italian um, for like 20 minutes and, okay. and she I mean <laughs> impossible <laughs> We sat there in silence and she goes, um, she was like, I'm seeing World, World War II. She goes, there's a girl and a guy, young. She's like, she's really young, 14. And she got impregnated and her boyfriend was sent off to war in Germany and he died. And she couldn't handle the, she couldn't bear raising the child alone and killed herself. Oh my God. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. Isn't that crazy? Wow. That's I know. Nuts. That's in your And blood. I said nothing. Nothing. What? I know. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I want to have her on the pod. Yeah, that sounds I, amazing. I, I, I said nothing. Nikki. Uh, we're on the podcast and even <laughs> I said nothing. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> damn, Holy dude. Shit, I know. Dude. I know. Uh, well, I mean. She's also really fun to hang with. You know, mate. Let's get her out here. Can we get What's her number? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there I don't know go. about that. Mm. <laughs> um, okay. Here we go. At patreon.com slash Christy comedy. That's the way to get involved in the show. Ask questions, uh, be a part. You know, you could. That's how where you become a true Puerto Rican. Is at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Christy Comedy. We've got seventy five hours of uh, content up there. We always like to ask the guests a couple of questions that the fans sent in. So this is from Alexander Wark. Alexander Work. Um, yeah, Work. What was the sexiest time in history? About three months ago, before monkeypox. There you go. <laughs> Easy. What is your favorite Italian restaurant in New York City? This is from Piccola Smash Cucina. Lincoln. Piccola Cucina. It's a real Italian restaurant, and it's all run by Sicilians, and it's got really, really good food. It's in Soho, and it's that or Ribalta for pizza. Pasta for Piccola Cucina and Ribalta for pizza. There you go. And here's from Tim, Tim Cedrone. Fuck, Mary kill JFK, Teddy Roosevelt, Obama. Oh, I would marry Obama. I would fuck JFK. I would kill Teddy Roosevelt. Okay. There you go. I'm superficial. I like it. Uh, Nicole Brown, for someone who has never been to NYC, can you explain the different boroughs and the type of people who live there? Well, I don't want to get canceled, so no. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Staten Island's the fucking best. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. I, uh, that, you know, I for anyone who has been to New York City, just come. I don't. I, I think their their boroughs are getting less and less of their own identity because everybody kind of lives everywhere now. So that's I think it I just think. becomes price point. That's all. Where it is. Yeah. 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 Um, but um. All right, babe. What uh, what are you doing for the rest of the day? Um, I what time is it? Ten thirty. I'll probably end up with Rosebud. We're gonna do that variety comics panel. You're not working out today? And then not now. It's I'll work out later in this afternoon. But where will you go like, to the gym? Will you go for a run? To the gym. I never run. I freaking so you'll go out. like to the gym in the hotel? No, there's a gym in the mall. The mall that I go to. That it's it's like a like a regular a gym. Real gym. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what is it like? Ten dollars to get in? Uh, yesterday was free, um, because I spoke French. Oh, and there? then today he's like, I'm also working today, so you can come for free today tomorrow. Where is it? Just time. in the if I just in the mall, just look for the gym. Yeah, but I might not have enough time today, so I also need my my, my body needs to take a break, so I might go tomorrow instead because I have less to do tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I, I I went for a little jog this morning and just a bull. The gym here is such bullshit. Yeah, it's just it, such it's, bullshit. Yeah, it's not a real gym. They you should, go, do, I was just in the Standard in Miami, and they have like a full fucking gym. I know. Do you want to go to Expectations downstairs right now and get a fucking eggs Benedict? Um, you you want to get food? I'll get food. Let's with you. get food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we get food? I'd love Why it. Not? All right, here. So let's just. So me and Mateo are gonna go eat food. Where can people find you? Um, at my Instagram, Mateo Lane, M A T T E O L A N E, or TikTok, Mateo Lane, M A T T E O L A N E, and uh, YouTube. Was I okay? Was I? Bo I'm always afraid that I'm boring. No, we or did not a funny. podcast in a bed. It was great. All right, I'm always worried. This that I'm a boring guest. Are you kidding me? Go follow, follow me. No, you're awesome. I want well, I want people listening to like have a good time. No, we did. We had a great time here. Um, and um, uh, you fucking awesome. Subway, Subway. Uh, some guy got this Subway series tattoo on his back. Now he gets Subway put out a promo. He gets free. 
uh, foot long sandwiches for this life. Is, I don't get it. Gays didn't have rights for years, and this is just flying <laughs> free with straight people. <laughs> That's what it is, man. And not the tattoo artist so proud of himself with that wobbly ass E. Like, this I, is I know. wild. You suck. Although, I will say, this guy, pretty nice back. Yeah, I was going to say he does have a D, does have a D spec. Um, all right. ChristyComedy.com for all my ticky wickies. You know what it is. <laughs> um, and uh, I got a, a bunch of new dates on tour for the end of the year. So go find your city and uh, Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. And um, what else? Oh, can you say hi to my friend Donnie? Hi, Donnie. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really was not. Oh,